Yes, yes. Your machine learning mentor, Eddie J here. Today we have two topics to discuss. First, we need to know about features as they are related to machine learning. Then we can talk about the curse of dimensionality. Here we are taking a step back and getting comfortable with the concepts. There are some definitions and ideas that will help with understanding later on. Of course, if I've missed something, please let me know in a comment down below. Let's jump right in. The classical definition of a feature is a distinctive attribute or aspect of something. For finding patterns, we need to add a few more words to our classical definition. The features we need should be informative, discriminating, and independent. For example, if we want to train a model to recognize images of birds and bats, we can't use the ability to fly as a feature. Both animals in this case can fly. Instead, we might use color and size as distinguishable features. When classifying objects, we have to choose a subset of meaningful features. Otherwise, we will encounter the dreaded curse of dimensionality. The curse refers to strange phenomena that arise because of too many features. Say we want to train a model to recognize 100 different animals, but we only have 100 images. One image for each animal. We can get 100% accuracy if we have enough features. The problem is, because we've used so many different dimensions to classify all 100 animals, when we test a new image, it will fail. This is called overfitting and will be covered in a future video. Let's break down the curse to visualize why it happens. Say we want to train a model to classify dogs and cats. The first dimension can be plotted as a line. We use the average red color as the first feature. As you can see, it doesn't classify well at all. So we add a second feature and dimension that is plotted as a grid. This time, we use the average green color for the second feature. Still, the results are not promising. Again, adding a third feature by checking for the average amount of blue in each picture. This is plotted into a cube shape. We can see that the cat images are now on a plane, and we can plot a surface to show the grouping. The problem is, all of the open space between the groups has also grown. If we were to introduce a new type of dog image, the model would not accurately predict it to be a dog. The feature quality and number do not generalize with fresh data, and hence, we encounter the curse of dimensionality. Much like machine models, humans also have reduced accuracy when trying to comprehend high dimensional spaces. We can illustrate the loss of accuracy by looking at a simulated 4D shape called a tesseract. Through careful observation, we can follow a vertex or a corner. By doing this, we can come to understand the rotation of the tesseract. By adding one more dimension, we increase the complexity exponentially. We can visualize this with a rotating pentaract shape. The number of dimensions can always increase. A cube with 10 dimensions becomes undistinguishable shape, and we must use fancy tricks to visualize meaningful structure. This is an example of the curse of dimensionality within our own minds. To summarize, a feature is an individual, measurable, property. In machine learning, not all features are equal. By selecting a focus subset of features, we can reduce complexity and improve generalization. 
meaning when we introduce a new test object, we will still have reasonable accuracy. Side effects of the curse of dimensionality appear when too many features are plotted, creating a sparse graph. The sparsity of data causes inflexible grouping, meaning our test data will have high accuracy, but new data will have low or random accuracy. In future episodes, we'll cover ways to avoid the curse and also some common symbols in machine learning. Remember to click the buttons below to show support and follow along. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.